everyone. This is Kalpana Puchala from India, a student at AMI QT Rotations. I would like to thank Dr. Stein and Dr. Banar for giving me this opportunity. My topic of presentation is movement disorders, and I'll be mainly focusing on the clinical aspects of movement disorders. My topics for today are Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's plus syndromes, Huntington disease, drug-induced movement disorders, diagnostic approach of tremors, and movement disorders in sleep, which include REM disorder and restless leg syndrome. Let's move on to our first topic, Parkinson's disease. Motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease include bradykinesia, rigidity, and resting tremor. Bradykinesia includes hypomania, which means mass species, where there are no expressions on the patient's face. Hypophonia means soft and weak voice. There is a decrease in arm swing of the patient. Patients take very small steps while walking. Uh, while most of these features can be observed directly, there are some hidden bradykinesia movements we need to test. So we ask the patient to repeat some of the movements for at least 10 times to elicit certain types of bradykinesia. The tests we do might include tapping fingers, tapping toes, etc. Patients might start with quick movements but gradually slows down the movements. Next, uh, next symptom is rigidity, which means increased in tone. We need to differentiate rigidity from spasticity. Rigidity is an extrapyramidal symptom, while spasticity is an upper motor neuron dysfunction. And next one is resting tremor. It is tremor present when the body part is relaxed, the tremor is often present in hands. It might also be present in legs and jaw. In idiopathic Parkinson's disease, the tremor starts with asymmetrical tremor and then progresses to symmetrical tremor. Next is Parkinson plus syndromes. I would like to tell you about the similarities and differences in Parkinson's plus syndromes. Uh, based on technology, Parkinson's disease is an nephropathy and free body dementia and multiple system atrophy are a type of nephropathy, whereas progressive supranuclear palsy and cardiobasal syndrome are a form of thalopathy. A lot of these diseases are characterized by features that can happen in Parkinson's, but happen earlier and more in an extent in these other diseases. For example, Lewy body dementia is characterized by visual hallucinations, and this can happen in Parkinson's. Parkinson's can absolutely develop dementia, but that's generally after a number of years as opposed to Lewy body early dementia. Lewy body dementia also has some other features, such as fluctuation in the level of energy. Mm -hmm. As for multiple system atrophy, if you see Parkinsonism, less cerebellar features, and dysmetria and ataxia, we should be definitely be thinking about multiple system atrophy. And these things are not generally seen in idiopathic Parkinson's disease. And one more thing, multiple system atrophy has is profound autonomic instability. Next, progressive supranuclear palsy is differentiated by idiopathic Parkinson's by early falls, rigidity, and <laughs> some sort of movement disorders. Corticobacillar syndrome practically have really lateral cortical signs. So this is related to cortical atrophy, particularly in the parietal region, but it may also be in a frontal region. 
So they develop apraxia, stereoglossis, which is when they are unable to tell when an object is in their hand. They also develop graphesthesia. This occurs when they cannot identify the number you are writing on their hand if their eyes are closed. This is an image showing mild frontal atrophy and asymmetry. This is classically seen in cortical basal degeneration. This imaging shows hummingbird sign, which is classical for progressive supranuclear palsy. Next, coming to Huntington disease. Huntington disease is a trinucleotide repeat disorder, and the trinucleotide is CAG repeat. It is an autosomal dominant inheritance. It is also associated with penetrance. Uh, the symptoms of Huntington's include personality changes, mood swings, depression, forgetfulness, and impaired judgment. Uh, it can also present with unsteady gait and involuntary movements such as chorea. Motor symptoms in Huntington includes chorea, which is a brief irregular movement. Chorea is typically seen in the first, typically first seen in the fingers and face muscles and then progresses to include all four limbs and joints. Next is dysmorphia, which means abnormal sustained positioning of the part of the body. The most common types of dystonia are twisting of the arm with hand clenching and excessive bending of the knee. There is, uh, in addition to chorea and dystonia, there is something called motor impersistence, which is inability to sustain a movement like holding up a cup in the hand without dropping it, trunk protrusion in persistence, and milk made dips. Talk about these two. We test tongue protrusion in persistence, which is when we ask the patient to pull out the tongue, sorry, to pull, to pull the tongue out and hold it out for at least 10 seconds. These patients will retract the tongue back into their mouth because their tongue is relaxing and they are unable to maintain that outward position of the tongue. And the other often thing we do is have them grip our hand, our fingers, and we feel for the relaxation of the hand, and that is what we call milkmaid's grip. What are the other motor symptoms in Huntington's include predikinesia, echinacea, Difficulty with rapidly alternating movements, difficulties performing sequence of movements like getting out of bed, standing up from a sitting position. So the treatment options for Huntington's include tetrabenazine, ditrabenazine, and antipsychotic drugs. Next, we can move. Yeah, this is a deep weighted MRI showing bilateral dead atrophy, which is seen in Huntington's disease. Next, we can move on to drug-induced movement disorders. Drug-induced movement disorders include neuroleptic-induced Parkinsonism, which means Parkinson's like tremors, rigidity, neuroleptic management syndrome, which includes hyperdermia caused by antipsychotic medications, specifically a dopamine antagonist. Medication induced acute dystonia means abnormal muscle contractions following a change in medication. Medication induced acute ecthesia, which means restlessness and fidgeting following a change in medication. Mostly atypical or typical antipsychotics. Other drug induced movement disorders are tardive dyskinesia, which means involuntary repetitive body movements, which may include grimacing, sticking out of the tongue, or smacking their lips. Tardive dystonia is a permanent, sustained, or repetitive muscle contraction 
resulting in twisting and repetitive movements or abnormal fixed postures. Active ataxia involves painful feelings of inner tension and anxiety and compulsive drive to move the body. Medication induced postural tremor and other medication induced movement disorders, which, uh, which includes involuntary muscle contractions or twitches. Antidepressant discontinuation syndrome, which includes features like dream like symptoms, trouble sleeping, nausea, poor balance, sensory changes, and anxiety. The diagnosis and treatment of drug induced movement disorders. First and foremost thing we have out to do is to identify which medication is causing it and then we can treat the cause, specific cause. Next, let's move on to the diagnostic approach of tremors. When a patient present with tremor, we need to differentiate what kind of tremor the patient has. If the patient has enhanced physiological tremor, uh, test the patient for anxiety, excessive caffeine intake, serum glucose levels, liver function testing, and thyroid function test. If the patient is taking or if the patient is taking any medications associated with tremor, if yes, we may have we can do a medication trail off and then see the patient again. If the patient is not taking any medications. We need to see if the tremor is relieved with distraction. If S, it is a psychogenic tremor, and we can send the patient for mental health evaluation. If any of the things is, is not possible in the patient, then it might be an organic cause. For an organic cause, if the patient is below 40 years, it might be a Wilson's disease, it might be a metabolic or genetic problem, it might also be an essential tremor. For Wilson's disease, we do chelation therapy. And for metabolic and genetic problems, we need to test the patient for what's the cause of this. If it's an essential tremor, we'll do a trial of beta blocker. If the patient is greater than 40 years, we need to see if the tremor is resting tremor or an action tremor. Resting tremor is pathognomonic of Parkinsonism. So, if there are additional features of Parkinson's disease like rigidity, pedicalitia, and postural instability, it is Parkinson's disease. So, we may treat the patient with anti sorry, dopaminergic agent. If there are no symptoms of Parkinson's but it is resting tremor, it's possible Parkinsonism, and we monitor and evaluate the patient for further cause. So if the patient has an actual tremor and the patient has a history of alcohol use disorder, it's usually withdrawn, the tremor due to withdrawal of alcohol. Next, if the patient, if the tremor is postural or intentional tremor, if the tremor is postural, it's most likely essential tremor for which we give a trial of beta blocker. And if it's intentional tremor, it's most probably a cerebellar tremor and we need to further evaluate the patient with imaging for stroke, mass, or malignancy, or multiple sclerosis. Next, we can move on to movement disorders in sleep. There are two movement disorders in sleep I'll be discussing. There are rapid eye movement sleep disorder and restless leg syndrome. Coming to rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder, in normal REM sleep, we are essentially paralyzed. REM sleep behavior disorder is when somebody is not paralyzed during the REM sleep. These people thrash around, roll out of the bed, talk in their sleep, hit their bed partner, and which is basically acting out of their dreams. Um, I've actually seen a case of REM sleep behavior disorder in Alexandria office where the patient said that he woke up beside his wife with a gun in his hand, which was so terrifying for both of them. So it's really important we swiftly diagnose the patient and treat him. 
So if the patient is awoken during the time, then report that they have been dreaming. RBM sleep behavior disorder can often perceive motor symptoms of Parkinson's or other synecreopathies. Treatment of RBM sleep behavior disorder includes melatonin or benzodiazepines. Next, moving on to restless leg syndrome. Restless, restless leg syndrome usually means uncomfortable sensations that begin while resting. It usually comes up uh, when you lie down for a long period of time or sitting for an extended period of time. It might also happen while sitting in car, airplane, or movie theater. It is usually relief with the movement. Uh, we can see worsening of the symptoms in the evening, and the symptoms mainly occur at night during the sleep. Nighttime leg motion. Restless leg syndrome may also be associated with more common condition called period limb movement of sleep. This condition causes the legs to twitch and kick during the sleep possibly throughout the night. Uh, and treatment options for restless leg syndrome include gabapentin, pregabalin, levodopa, dopamine agonists, opioids, and iron supplementation. There is a study which showed uh, a low levels of ferritin in patients with restless leg syndrome. So we need to send the lab results for ferritin and iron levels and treat the patient for this way. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity.